you know, at this point in my life, having drawn him for decades and all of a sudden having, having fame in, in, our, in our city. I'm not, I'm not letting it go to my head. I, I'm, I'm starting to take periods of time just sitting down and giving glory to the creator of creators and asking him, what do you want me to do with Murford? And, you know, when I start thinking I should do this or I should do that, I, I'll, get, I'll get a piece of paper stuck between my windshield wiper and my window saying, Murford, thanks for what you're doing. So he'll continue to be not just a, a cool looking cartoon, rather tree tune that makes people happy, but continuing to emanate the joy and the love and the giving of the giver of gifts from the father of lights. And if, if he wants to, him to go to the ends of the earth, I'm good with that, but I'm not gonna force it. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. You know, I'm uh, Wendell Phillips Berwick III, so I just need to put in a plug for the original Wendell Phillips, who was a, a rich white guy, an aristocrat, who got on a horse and preached against slavery. So I, I, I'm the third. I'm Wendell Phillips Berwick III. So my great-grandfather was named after the, the abolitionist Wendell Phillips. I've always drawn since I was a little boy, when my father got my brother and I, a couple desks with a lot of paper and pencils. But it was in high school in 1977 in the boys' first home economics class that I recall giving him the name Murford. My table mate asked me, Berwick, what's that guy you draw all the time? Does he have a name? And just Murford came out of my mouth. So, M-E-R-F-E-R-D. He had never really, uh, gone outside, come off of uh, table scrap or paper or pen or, or uh, the most I had done was uh, create some of them to hang from trees. And um, when, when I got to Ferguson and I had uh, eight by four plywood canvases available to me, I just went nuts. <laughs> I painted. Uh, I painted them all over the place. When people started taking down the plywood, and of course there were artists from all over that came and painted. I was not the only one. There was a <clears throat> group called Paint for Peace. It was so exciting on Thanksgiving Day to come down to Ferguson with, with some paint and see that there were at least a dozen other artists who had the impetus to come and paint. So I met these artists and and they were doing this and they were doing that, flowers, sunshine, you know, candles, peace, brotherly love. And so Murford, I developed him through Ferguson into even more of a like a, a hands up, let's pray kind of guy. Um, and it was, but, but before I started putting Murford in a position of hands up, let's pray, with the slogan, hands up, let's pray. On that day, I asked three African-Americans what they thought about me 
taking the hands up, don't shoot slogan and turning, turning it in the hands up, let's pray. And a man, a woman, and a man, all right here in Ferguson, all, all um, African Americans said, yes, that would be great. You know, so <clears throat> I felt I had, had um, the community's blessing to do that. And then, and then I went from him having hands up, let's pray, with a slogan, hands up, let's pray, to just hands out. And I've noticed that when I just paint Murford with his hands out like this, people just get a good feeling. And being out in the street or out in the hood painting him has, because I'm out there for hours at a time, there's people that live around there that walk there daily and they stop and there's some white guy painting Murford on a butt ugly piece of plywood that they're getting sick and tired of seeing anyway. And Murford brings a joy to their hearts. I've had, had a variety of smaller encounters that were all great, where I, I was able to pray with people and pray for people. Um, but by and large, the greatest experience I've had so far was the painting a large mural on um, Pastor David Baker's church in the hood. And he himself will say, it's in the hood. He had asked me to come and paint on the side of his church. And it was so large, I used my bucket truck, and I painted Murford and his sidekick, the Tree Tunes. And during that time, each day, I'd meet new kids that lived in and around that church. And they would stop by and ask if they could use some of my paint. I'd give them some of my spray paint. They'd paint their bicycles. They'd paint their shoes. They'd paint their gym shoes. And I, I taught them how to paint grass and a river, and we painted a large swath of river and grass. Well, at the, uh, at when, when that mural was finished, uh, I let the kids sign their names. And one day, some teenage boys who'd kind of been standoffish, they came close, and they asked if they could sign their names. Now, just before they had come to the wall, a mother had buried her son, and they had come from the wake across the street, and she wrote the name of her son on the wall. And that same day, a young man came and wrote the name of his deceased mother on the wall. So there was, that had happened. And then these, these, these teenage boys came, and they asked if they could sign names. Well, they weren't signing their own names. I asked them whose names they were signing, and one was a murdered cousin, one was a murdered brother, one was a murdered friend. So, this is nine-year-old Jamila, Jamila Bolden. She lives uh, just a couple blocks from here, and uh, she was shot while doing math on her mommy's bed, gunmen just shot several bullets through their house. Her mother was shot in the leg. Her grandma held Jamila, telling her to keep breathing until Officer Kasem came. Tried hard as he could to do to do resuscitation on a little girl and. She passed away in his arms and he broke down and wept. And a couple days after her death, I, I spent painting her, especially after hearing her daddy's testimony the next morning. I don't know how James Boland kept his composure, but he spoke of the Lord. He spoke of how he has a hope in the Lord that, that through this evil, he can only hope that, that God's purposes would, would be worked out. But, that prompted me to paint her because of Jamela, because of her family. I'm believing because of the words of her father's mouth and because life and death is in the power of the tongue. The things he said will, will grace over and, and 
her life would be a seed for righteousness and uh, to have her life snuff out at nine years old. Jamela represents many young lives that have been snuffed out way before they should have been. Oh, thank oh, you. No, I was going to help you. Yeah, thank you. Let's bring it up. If you bring it up here, when I get up there, let's turn it over here. Here, no, no, JT, you can relax till I get. Yeah, just. Buffer it to, you know, keep the cold out. But uh, it's it's an amazing experience. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be down twenty something okay. degrees, so I'm real concerned about that. Yeah. You know, if rain comes with that, you know, uh, gotta try to waterproof it as best I can. And Murphy with the linseed oil, I did the, I did the cutouts. Saturated it with the linseed oil, and then I went in and tried to stain it. And not great, I think. So, D Dave's camp here is taking these templates that I brought over. Mm -hmm. The ones that are hanging up? Yeah. Those were the original. I had to trace them out, cut them out. And, and I bring them the, the plywood. And like Dave says, he traces them, cuts them. And then stain them. Uh, but I, it's all new to me right now is the, is the painting and everything. Like uh, Phil says, you just pretty much got to just be artistic with it. And but Dave being a uh, tattoo artist in his own right, I mean, look at his artwork on his arms. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've been known to tattoo a little bit. So it, it's, a good, it's a good fit. <laughs> I was bored. <laughs> so he's, uh, the Murfords are, we're going to do it on commission. And we already got people buying them. Dave's got people that have come to the camp that want to buy them. Yes, yeah, as a matter of fact, I need to give you Ginger's number because okay. she's definitely one you get over, and so is uh, Gina. And Gina then when when Dave with... paints and his crew, Rob cuts them, Dave paints them, and then I'm I'm gonna do the embellishing on the on the hands and the face. So the hands and the face. Until some of these guys get trained how to do the hands and the face, I'm gonna keep doing the hands and the face. So. And then you come up and do all the the detail, artistic work, you know. Facial expressions and everything like that. That's all. That's all Phil's doing there. So it's still fan, Phil's handiwork. He just got the grunt, the grunt work. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not mad about it. It's, a, it's an honor. Well, a couple guys came by on their bicycle. Rob and Dave, and they had a homeless camp across the river. And they said, "Man, Phil, we'd love to help you make Murfords. Let us know if we can ever be any help." So one day I went across the river and I found my way to their camp. And lo and behold, it was one of the most beautiful homeless camps I'd ever seen. It was like better home, better homeless camps and gardens. But uh, there was Rob, there was Dave. They set up shop. I brought them plywood. I brought them some Murfords as templates. And they began to draw them, cut them. And little did I know, Dave had artists in him and he began to paint them. So we built a, a pretty fun relationship, from making Murfords across the river at their homeless camp. I got a call from an old friend, a friend that 15 years before, when I had gone to trim his dad's trees, he was overdosing on his father's floor. And before I went up the tree, I'd come into the house and I'd 
sat down on his chest and I began to pray and slap him in the chest. And I prophesied that one day he would be delivering many from heroin and drugs in the city. So 15 years later, Murford's blowing up in St. Louis. I get a call from Paul Ganella and uh, he said, Phil, I want you to work on your Murfords here. And he gave me this underground, I'll call it a studio. And it's not like your normal studio, but it's, it, it's a rock of Gibraltar. And it's underneath where the homeless work and sleep. And there's a Murford riding a pallet on the wall above the pallet yard. down into South City, mid city and South City of St. Louis, because there was one, one graffiti, one big ugly graffiti on a, on a billboard that uh, uh, was really close a block away from my daughter and son-in-law's house, and it bugged me. And I uh, one day came there with my bucket truck, and, uh, and I, I, I made it into a Murford. And it was a morphodite looking more Murford, but uh, it changed the atmosphere. That's what I wanted to do, change the atmosphere. One day I went back to clean it up and uh, take some of the tag out of it and, and a lady stopped by here and thought we were taking Murford down and she pleaded with us not to take it down uh, and I assured her we weren't, we weren't taking it down. And she was really- We angry. need something positive for all the killing that is being done in this area. It's beautiful artwork and it sends a message. Thank you. Do not kill other people. There's just too many people being murdered here in this area. Wow. All around. Wow. Thank you so very much, whomever did it. Well, you're welcome, whomever did it. I know. Just do not take it down, please. We will not take it down. Then another site, not too far from there, that was Morgan Ford in Chippewa. There was a site at Grand and 30, Grand and Miami, near Graboy, where uh, a really perverted uh, tag was. Just an obscene symbol and obscene words, and that bugged me too. So I redid that, and I totally covered that over with, uh, with a Murford saying, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Thanks for coming to paint over. Yeah. The city shouldn't have this stuff on it, no matter where it's at. Mm -hmm. On the south side, north side, west side. Don't do that. We're going to take this off today. Grand in Miami. People from all over the world walk past this vulgarity. And then there were another five or six panels on that building. So I just, I, I just, I did faith, and I, I did hope, and I, I did love. And uh, some guy stopped by one day in, in the course of me spending two or three days doing this in between the police coming back and forth. And he said, he shouted out, you need to do respect. So I did respect. And there was one, a couple big panels left and so I, I did a couple guitar playing Murphs. And they were awesome guitar playing Murphs. And then I got to thinking, you know, I've been painting him for a year, several years now on the street. People are probably beginning to wonder what his name is, so I, I painted I painted his name. Then uh, I got this uh, front page coverage right here. Of uh, That was an honor to be in the Riverfront Times. I mean, I'm a tree guy. And I got to be in the Riverfront Times, and people, uh, they couldn't keep the boxes 
Phil and uh, and people were coming by and having me sign the Murfords, uh, the papers. And uh, me and me and Cap, my 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 uh, sidekick in painting, went out one day to just do some filming. And we were just blown away. We show up and all the Murfs were buffed out. They were all wiped out. And uh, it just it just let our heart down. And and all the people in the many blocks all around were so bummed. They were so bummed. Some people, many people told me they had cried when Murford showed up. And now they were crying that he was gone. I mean, look at this. That that was the that's what happened to um, the power of life and death is in his tongue, Murford. It uh, pretty sad. Uh, <laughs> then that I mean, respect got no respect. Faith got wiped out, but they didn't wipe out the word faith, but they wiped out faith. And then it started a series where we started painting. I started painting over the Murph, the, the wiped out Murfords, and. Um, I painted all the Murfords again a second time. Here, here's my guitar playing Murford. Totally buffed out. I redid him, and then this guy named Asset came by, and he wiped out Murford. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to start incorporating the tag into the third series of Murfords. So half a dozen panels I redid. I did three times, and I took this Asset tag and I incorporated it into this massive Murford saying be an asset and and really 25 Murfords I counted them have been wiped out around St. Louis the only ones that aren't wiped out are uh, the welcome to St. Louis Put away the knife. It's on a big billboard so high in a building they can't get to it. Drive nice. I did that for a road rager who terrified my da youngest daughter. So there's um, just a handful of Murphers left because they have guardians. But uh, one of the last remaining Murphers I recently uh, found out was buffed out. And I'm really kind of ticked about this one. But I have a fun thing I'm going to do regarding it. Get back at the taggers without hurting them.
guys have nothing better to stink and do with their lives, man. Just like... They're famous for hating Murford. They're famous for hating Murford. Ozzy and Rogue. It's like freaking infamously famous or famously infamous. Sheesh. This is what I'm gonna do. That that spray can is gonna be holy. Akazi, that hand's gonna be holding them by the scruff of their hoodie. Kazi and Rogue are gonna be holding hands, and Murford's gonna be holding them and dangling them. And that's how they'll really be up there. <laughs> that's gonna be perfect. I can clean them up, man. So when I have found a building or a tree to place the Murford or the Murfords, I've really scoped out that place for some time. Pull up to the curb. Sometimes it's the middle of the day. Sometimes it's after public workers go home. I'll put out the outrigger and then I, I, I position that old bucket truck so that I can articulate the boom anywhere I want. I'm thinking, okay, I need the Murford. I need the aircraft steel cable in case anyone tries to steal them. I need my arborist rope, which a good friend of mine has donated a bunch of arborist rope. John of Vertical Voyages. I try to fit it all in the bucket because I, I got cutters. I, I have the Murford. I'm going up. I'm like hanging on to the Murford, hanging on to... Uh, everything that I can hang on to. Sometimes I have to make two or three trips. It, it's not just a slam bam, thank you ma'am, hanging a Murford. I don't want him swinging into the building and breaking him in the building and, and I want him visible. So I got them up there, I got them set. They're gonna last many years because I've soaked them with linseed oil. I protected them with urethane. It feels so good to come down and shut the truck off, take a step back, and know that he's going to make a ton of people happy.
his name? Yeah, Murphy. Murphy, hey man. I be saying that dude everywhere. Yeah. Man, I, I just was wondering, you know, I see him here and there. I been seeing on a lot of billboards and I was just wondering. Thanks. Man, whoever the man, they put some good effort in uh Man, I know what the hell we do. You know, feel good. You feel love coming from him. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that, yeah. That was, that's my prayer. I feel something out of him. Yeah, I see him a little bit everywhere. Thanks, I see him in some of the works areas. But yeah. that's a good thing. I mean, like I said, it brings thought and hope. Maybe, maybe change. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Thanks, All right, man. Take care, man. All right. You know, people will ask me, how did you get Murford up there? And I have so much fun. I'll tell them, you know, when the conditions are just right, and the sun's over the horizon, and the only ones that know are the tree tunes, Murford comes to life, and he scampers up there, and they chuckle. The haters managed to find almost every painting and wiped out the Murphs tagged him and buffed him out or stole him. So between now and then, I've been installing him up in the air. I figured that the taggers can have their walls, Murford owns the air. But recently MoDOT, you know, Missouri Department of Transportation, has taken down every Murford along all the highways surrounding the city and in the city. Fortunately, they've, they've left them in piles for me and they've notified me and they have not fined me. But it's opened up some dialogue because they own large swaths of uh, just no man's land along the highways. And, and the future of Murford and hopefully other artists are, are to open the doors to allow us those of us that just want to break out of the studios along the corridors to, 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 to put our art, to have live art, so that people especially who are stuck in traffic jams, you know, are going to and fro, just looking at nothing but, but ugly billboards, can see some art along the roads. Also, you know those bicycle safety insignias that are stenciled on the, on the roads that are wearing out all over the place? I want to start Paint Murphy riding a bicycle. going to keep doing what I'm doing. And he's a brand of brotherly love. 
You know, and people just feel that without the words. Love your neighbor as yourself. And be kind to others. Amen, amen, amen.